Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Biology with Annie. Today I am going to be explaining about restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes were first discovered in bacteria by a Swiss microbiologist named Werner Arber in 1969. He was trying to understand how bacteria protects itself from viral invasion when he came across this discovery. Now imagine this is a bacterial cell. Inside it is the bacterial chromosome which has the ability to replicate. Now, bacteria can be attacked by viruses known as bacteriophage which do not have any machinery to replicate their DNA. So they invade bacterial cells by inserting their DNA with the purpose of hijacking bacterial machinery. This is so that their DNA can now be replicated. Restriction enzymes are bacteria's defense mechanism against these viruses. They act like molecular scissors which can cut the viral DNA into fragments so that they can no longer do any harm to the bacteria. The name restriction enzyme is due to these enzymes ability to restrict the growth of bacteriophages. Soon after its discovery, American microbiologist Hamilton Smith was able to devise a strategy to isolate the restriction enzyme from a bacteria known as Haemophilus influenzae. Using this, he was able to understand their molecular mechanism of action. So let me explain this with an example. Imagine this is a double-stranded DNA. The pink line represents the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA. Protruding from this are the nitrogenous bases. Here is a restriction enzyme called ECOR1 and it can recognize a specific nucleotide sequence called restriction site or recognition site. Restriction sites are usually 4 to 8 nucleotides long and is palindromic. A palindrome is a word that reads the same forward or backward. In the context of DNA sequence, what that means is that the sequence on one strand is identical to that on the other strand when read in the same orientation. Here, the sequence G A A T T C is present in both strands but is inverted and in reverse order. This provides symmetry so that restriction enzymes can recognize the restriction site on both strands and this ensures that a cut has been made in the sugar phosphate backbone on both the top and the bottom strand. This cut creates a discontinuity in the DNA and is also known as a DNA nick. Eco R1 digestion produces a nick which is not in the exact center of the restriction site. This results in what is known as a sticky end or a cohesive end because of these overhanging nucleotides which have the ability to rejoin or base pair with each other. Some enzymes like ECOR5 creates a nick in the exact center of the restriction site. This results in a blunt end where overhanging nucleotides are absent. Since their discovery, over 3000 restriction enzymes have been isolated from different species of bacteria. Each enzyme has a unique restriction site to which it binds and it produces either a sticky end or a blunt end. Here I have listed a few of them. Since there are so many restriction enzymes, it became important to have a naming convention which every scientist would have to follow when naming a newly discovered restriction enzyme. When naming a restriction enzyme, the first letter has to be an abbreviation of the genus name. The second and the third letter is an abbreviation of the species name. The fourth letter represents the particular bacterial strain and this is optional. Finally, a Roman numeral is added if multiple restriction enzymes have been isolated from the same bacterial strain. This is so that the order of identification is known. More than 800 restriction enzymes are commercially available and routinely used in laboratories today for DNA modifications. The first major application of these enzymes was demonstrated in 1971 by an American biochemist named Daniel Nathans. In an effort to study the function of the different genes in a cancer-causing virus, Daniel Nathans used restriction enzymes to fragment a viral genome. 
he was then able to separate the resulting fragments using a technique known as gel electrophoresis. In gel electrophoresis, DNA fragments get separated based on their size. Because DNA is negatively charged, it moves to the positive electrode through the porous gel. The smaller fragments move much faster than the larger fragments and this enables the separation. Once separated, the fragments can be removed from the gel and used to study the genes encoded in them. This simple idea to separate digested fragments had however enormous applications later on. Scientists were now able to devise strategies to join different DNA fragments using an enzyme known as DNA ligase. DNA ligase covalently seals the nicks in the DNA backbone. This helps to create hybrid DNA molecules also known as recombinant DNA. Restriction enzymes became a powerful tool which could enable combining of DNA fragments from different species. So powerful that one could genetically engineer bacteria to produce human insulin in very large quantities and this could be provided to diabetic patients to manage their illness. Hence, for the discovery of restriction enzymes and their applications, these three scientists were awarded a Nobel Prize in 1978. Thank you for staying till the end of the video and here are three things you could do to support this channel. If you like this video, let me know by clicking on the like button. Leave any queries or feedback in the comment section. Also, subscribe to my channel if you like to see more videos like this. Thank you.